Hello. So now we're going to analyze the extremely common situation in which a book is uh, going up an incline, but it's being pulled by a rope that goes through a pulley and is attached to a cup. You know, happens all the time. So the mass of the book, let's call it big M. The mass of the book is one kilogram. The mass of the cup, let's call it a small m is 0 0.5 kilograms. Actually, I want to use all available space, but this is a bit too crowded. OK, it's a little better. And uh, the book, you know, initially has this um, speed, that velocity, initial velocity is three meters per second. And the angle between the table and the horizontal theta is 20 degrees. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2. The coefficient of static friction is 0 0.50. So the question is, you, know, you give this book a push, how far is it going to make it, um, how far is it going to slide uh, into the on the on the table. So let's make this string a little shorter because we need the space. Okay. So we want a distance. So we can probably use one of the kinematic equations. Let's analyze first the free body diagrams of the book and the cup. So let's do the cup over here and the book over here. So for the cup, we have the weight of the cup, mg, and we have the tension. That's it. For the book, we have it's a little bit more crowded. We have um, and it's initially at an angle, and the weight is oops, the weight is pointing straight down. When we make this straight again, this one is at an angle like that. So the weight is like that, mg, capital M this is the book. And if this angle is 20 degrees, that means that this angle is 20 degrees. There's a normal. There is the tension. And there's also friction because it's moving in that direction. So if it's moving, to the right means that the friction, and you know, have to write it on the same. Actually, this is probably the tension. This is smaller one is the friction. But you know, they are parallel to the table. So we have all these forces. The poor book has a lot of uh, you know stuff going against him, but we'll see. All right, so 
friction is just mu times the normal. The normal is gonna be the weight. So, well, same magnitude as the weight. So that is not going to change. This weight doesn't change. This tension depends on the weight of the cup, so it doesn't change. So the acceleration of this system is going to be constant. If the acceleration is constant, we can use kinematic equations. And this one in particular will be useful. Because we know the initial velocity, it's three meters per second. We know the final velocity, actually, I should write it over here too. Final velocity is zero because it's going to be, um, it's going to stop. This delta x is what we want. And so this acceleration, the acceleration of the, of the book is what we need. So I'm going to write over here the displacement that we are looking to calculate. This one will be zero. This one goes this way as negative. And we just divide by uh, 2a. So twi tw twice the acceleration of the system. So we just have to get the acceleration of the system. So we have a number of equations. So we have, you know, we can go from the free body diagram to the uh, statement of Newton's second law directly. So sum of forces, and this is for the cup. Mm. I'll write it over here. Actually, this is not too bad for a notation. Let's put it up here. Okay, so sum of forces in Y for the cup is equal to minus mg plus T that is equal to mass times acceleration of the cup in the Y direction. And then we're going to have leave some space over here. The sum of forces in X, and this would be for the book. We have minus, mm, let me write down the Y first. It will make things a little a bit more clear. <clears throat> so you have minus mg. This is capital mg. And this is cosine 20, cosine of 30, I mean of uh, theta. And plus the normal equals zero. There's no acceleration in the vertical direction. It's just on the table. Um, sum of forces in X is going to be, this is for the, for the book, book, we have minus MG, capital M, mm, sine 20 or sine theta. Um, minus the tension, so it's in the negative direction. The weight is also in the negative direction. Friction is also in the negative direction, so minus friction. That is equal to mass, mass of the book, times acceleration of the book in X. All right, so we have one more equation, which is the acceleration constraint. 
So if the book moves in the positive direction or accelerates in the positive direction in X, then the cup moves also in the positive direction. And that is in the, sorry, equal. And it's in the Y direction. And we can just call both of those A. This one is what we have over here. So we can get rid of the subscripts. And this one is what we have over here. So we can get rid of the subscripts. The cup and the book are connected. So they move together. So they have the same acceleration. So there's only one acceleration in the system. Okay. So these uh, friction is mu times the normal. The normal, we can get it from this one. So normal is, this one is negative here, it goes on the other way positive, mg cosine theta. And mu is gonna be mu kinetic. And then the tension, we can get it from this one. Tension is gonna be m a plus mg. And this is a small m, it's about the, um, the cup. So we can rewrite the equation for x. Um, it's going to be minus mg sine theta minus small m a minus small m g, which is the tension. And then the friction is minus mu kinetic uh, big m g cosine theta. That's equal to mass big m times acceleration. Okay. So, we know big M and small m, we know mu k, we know g, we know theta. This is one equation and one unknown, so we can find what the acceleration of the system is. Just have to solve for A. We can do that. I guess we, we are not gonna use these ones. Mm. Maybe we'll use them for the next part. I think we might need this one for the next part. So I'm just gonna put it down here so that we remember that the tension was MA plus MG. Okay, so Then um, this one is the only A on the side of the equation. So we can put it over here plus MA. Um, this one we can just factorize it as A big M times small m. So the total mass of the system times acceleration. And all of these are negative. So we can put the negative outside. It's gonna be minus um, mg sine theta plus small mg plus mu k, big mg, cosine theta. Actually, it might be even nicer if all of these have g, so we can put the g outside.
All right. That is equal to acceleration. And the total mass, we can move it to the other side of the equation, dividing. Right, so that it's a nice equation. These are all masses, mass, 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 divided by mass. We get rid of the kilograms. This is just a fraction of gravity, right? The units are mass times acceleration. I like to leave equations like that. They, keep, they show you very transparently the relationship between the acceleration of the system and gravity, acceleration due to gravity. All right, so we can just plug in the numbers. Mm, we don't have a lot of space, so I'm just going to, um, I guess it's fine, we can put them here. So acceleration is minus G, um, one kilogram times sine theta. So sine of 20 degrees, then it's gonna be, um, well, G, I should put the number in there. Minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, 0 0.34 kilograms plus uh, 0 0.5, this is the smaller mass, kilograms, plus mu k is 0 0.2 times the big mass is one times cosine of 20 degrees, and that is 0 0.18 kilograms. And we divide that by the total mass of the system, which is one times 0 0.5, that's 1.5 kilograms, right? So we add everything together, the 0 0.34 plus the 0 0.5 plus the 0 0.18, 79. Uh, so this number over here is uh, 1.03 kilograms divided by 1.5. Uh, this ratio, this whole ratio is 0 0.68. So let's just put it in here. And as I mentioned, it's a fraction the acceleration due to gravity, the kilograms um, cancel out. This is just a fraction. And we multiply times the negative 9.8. And we get um, minus 6.73 um, meters per second squared. Okay, the acceleration is negative because it's to the to the left. So now we can calculate the displacement. It's going to be minus three meters per second, just like that, squared divided by negative. Mm, negative and the negative over here, cancel. So uh, 6.73 times two. So 13.45 uh, meters per second squared. So nine divided by the negative uh, 13, give us a distance of um, 
0 0.668. So I'm going to write it over here. 0 0.67, let's say, meters. Second squares go away. One of the meters go away. You have meters on top. And so that is the answer. Right, so we, uh, we use kinematic, uh, kinematic equation. We just have to calculate the acceleration using Newton's second law for the whole system. And then the next question says, at the highest point, does the book stick to the slope or does it slide back down? So the equations are going to be similar, but now the book is on top, it's being pulled by the cup. So the book will wanna move, you know, without friction, it will move to the left. That means that this friction it's gonna move, it's gonna be in the, in the opposite direction. And it's gonna be static. So is it going to move? Well, uh, it moves if tension plus the horizontal component of the weight is greater than fs max so fs max is mu static times the normal and the normal is still big m g right so on this side you have some of forces in X for the book. And we have minus tension. And we know what the tension is. It's this one over here. Mm. And then Yes, okay. So minus tension minus big MG sine of theta. Plus the uh, static friction equals mass big M times acceleration of this system. So, and this one is gonna be F is max. So, yeah, minus M, a minus mg minus big m g sine theta plus mu static times the normal. And the normal was mg. cosine theta. So mg cosine theta equals big M times A. Mm.
So I think the the easiest way is to do it first uh, with the acceleration equals to zero. So in the not moving case, then we will just have um, minus mg minus big mg sine theta. Um, this one will be zero, so we can put it on the other side minus, well, it's, it's positive here, so it goes minus um, fs. We have the minuses everywhere, so we can just put a plus over here. And this is a question because you know, we're assuming that the acceleration is zero. But um, this one is going to be mm, 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 has a 4.9 newtons. And this one is one times 9.8 times sine of 20. That's 3.35 newtons. And the static friction is uh, mu s, so 0.5. Mm. 0.5 times mm, big M, so 1 times g, 9.8, times cosine of 20 degrees. That is 4.32 um, newtons. Okay, so this is in form of question again. So this is 4.9 plus 3.35 is 8.25 Newtons. Uh, that is the, that will be the, the pool of the component of the weight and the tension. And it is actually greater than the maximum on um, force that the static friction can provide. And so that means that the, the book will start sliding back down. All right, so for that second part of the problem, what we did was to calculate what is the maximum force that the static friction can provide, and what is the force that you get from uh, the tension and the uh, and the weight, just at the moment in which it is at the very top, and so the acceleration um, is zero. Since these two are greater than this one, it is going to slide back down. All right. So I hope you like this problem. Thank you. <laughs>